Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Cheryl Thaxton uh, coming to you from sunny Dallas, Texas. Today, I'm going to be presenting a topic, um, Outcomes of a National Cancer Center uh, Supported Training Course in Palliative Care for Oncology APRNs. A little bit about my background. I've been a nurse practitioner, a nurse for 30 years, and I've been a nurse practitioner since 1999. Um, a bulk of my care has been uh, geared towards pediatric and then later the adult family population. Um, I really do favor working with my neonates and my pediatric patients. Uh, but in about, uh, 2010, I started the um, Pediatric Quality of Life program with a, a wonderful team of um, doctors, um, chaplains, social workers, and uh, pharmacists. And we started the Pediatric Palliative Care program. So that was the beginning of my journey as a palliative care nurse practitioner. Today's presentation will focus on a lot of our work done in that realm, and also um, the co-PI on this study is Dr. Betty Farrell, who was not uh, able to be here today. Dr. Farrell has nearly 50 years of experience, and her expertise is focused on uh, pain management, quality of life, and palliative care. She's actually the, a nursing research, research educator and director and professor at the City of Hope. Um, and she's also a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing and has over 500 publications. I have really been given the honor and pleasure of doing a lot of publications. Many of them do focus on pediatric palliative care, but this topic will focus on pediatric and adult palliative care. So I'm super excited to be here and I'm thankful and grateful for those uh, who chose this presentation. So the objectives today, I'm gonna be speaking about, about APRN, so Advanced Practice Registered Nurses, um, who are the primary providers of cancer care at the time of diagnosis, during cancer treatment, and working in inpatient and outpatient settings. So this study focused on that. And these are um, nurse practitioners, APRNs, who provide care to pediatric and adult patients. And APRNs have a significant uh, potential role in integrating palliative care uh, within their everyday ongoings. And there's a need, a need for generalist care so that those who do primary oncology care can have that skill set in palliative care and be able to care for patients the same way that palliative care teams do. So here are my learning objectives. I'm going to quickly focus on the eight domains of palliative care. I'm going to discuss several practice related uh, skills that relate to oncology APRNs and how they align with th those domains in palliative care. Then I'm going to describe the implementation of the skills training that we did in this study, the process of improvement, the nursing education, and the clinical care skills that we provided. So let's go back, um, talk about, and provide some context about um, this interest in palliative care education. So LNEC, uh, which stands for the End of Life Nursing Education Consortium, is a group of innovative nursing leaders who back in 2000 decided to put together um, formalized palliative care training. And the first course started back in 2001. LNEC is actually a collaboration between the City of Hope and the American Association of Colleges of Nurses, which, which I mentioned. One of the great things about the work we've done, and I believe I joined LNEC in 2011, so I've been um, writing with them for a while. We actually published together, we write together, we've written several course uh, textbook chapters every year we do a lot of great work together. Um, we've done, we've educated over 45,000 nurses, chaplains, physicians, um, uh, in person and online. And those LNIC trainers have gone on to disseminate the training to over 1.4 million others in the medical nursing community. So that's pretty exciting. Um, LNIC has been presented in every state across the U.S. and D.C., uh, there's trainers in about 100 or so countries, and the language of LNEC, the curriculum, is translated into 12 or so languages. I actually had the honor and privilege of bringing the pediatric palliative care LNEC to Japan back in 2017 for the first time. So now Japan has a pretty stellar growth in pediatric palliative care. I was so um, fortunate to be part of that launch. So... Um, this study will report the outcomes of this NCI-funded training grant, and the focus is from 2017 to 2022. So 
So let's look at the primary background of the LNET curriculum. And the, the, way, the reason I wanted to mention this is this kind of gives a broad overview of the types of things that learners um, will encounter if they do um, decide to um, register or take the training. And there's various trainings. Uh, some are free trainings. Um, I've seen it done virtually. There's a lot of modes where this training can be implemented. Um, these are primary training titles, as you can see here. Uh, some of them include diverse patient populations. Some modules focus extensively on palliative care skills, such as communication. Communication can be an entire training where we talk about how to have the tough discussions about advanced care planning with patients and families, how to uh, discuss uh, difficult topics, family meetings where there's ongoing conflict, you know, chairs throwing, people crying, how to have those calm conversations and get your point across effectively and utilizing evidence-based practice. There's also a national, as I mentioned, pediatric and neonatal focused content within the training. So another quick overview about what each of those modules that I showed you previously, what do they, uh, what do those curricula uh, contain in terms of the modules? So each training session, again, is specific to the patient population, which is within uh, the focus. So we'll have uh, one module entitled palliative care nursing. You know, what is palliative care? Why does it deal with, um, you know, chronic and life threatening illness? And why is the focus on quality of life? What does quality of life mean? What is a family unit? Um, why are nurses burning out? So our first module is pretty broad and does broach into the history of palliative care, the hospice movement um, that started years ago, uh, the pioneers of that hospice movement. And then the second module goes into pain um, management, symptom management. We talk about ethical issues, you know, what types of things are in um, when you talk about having a medical power of attorney. What does that mean? Why do you need one? Cultural considerations. What are some rituals that are very common in certain cultures? How to avoid bias um, and issues such as um, equity and um, inclusion. Those types of things are in the cultural considerations module. And then, as I mentioned, one of my favorite modules is communication. How to have these tough conversations and gain the trust of individuals who are meeting you for the very first time. Why, why should they trust what you're telling them about their prognosis? They're just meeting you as a provider. Um, as an APRN. So we talk through those skill sets and how to gain the trust, how to sit um, at the level of the patient and, um, you know, maintain really good trusting eye contact for those who like to have eye contact. Um, then we talk through loss, loss, grief, and bereavement. What are those types of support? Legacy building um, in terms of um, how to support families who are grieving actively on uh, through the loss of their loved one. What does months later look like? What can you offer them in terms of services months later after the patient's um, death? And then also we talk through the final hours for nurses who are boots on the ground experiencing the death and loss of a patient. What do you need? Who's on your team? Uh, what are the vital roles to make sure that you're supporting the patient and family to the best of your ability? So um, uh, to go back to the... Um, the research in terms of the National Consensus Project and the NCI grant, the National Consensus Project guidelines are the key. They are basically the key, the core of what we do in palliative care. And these guidelines were developed by 17 national organizations who provided representatives to serve um, the steering committee and write uh, these guidelines. We're on the fourth edition of these guidelines. So they're nationally recognized and these create a blueprint uh, for excellence by establishing comprehensive foundation and a gold standard for palliative care. So everyone who's practicing palliative care should have a copy of these um, guidelines. They're essentially the Bible for how we do palliative care. How is it effective? And to make sure that we're having continuity and alignment across the U.S. And um, there are over um, 90 national organizations that support the endorsement of the National Consensus Project guidelines. So the training is uh, was a great experience. I've been involved again uh, since the very beginning. Uh, we do have an up and coming training next year, but it was intended to uh, prepare APRNs to serve as clinical resource, uh, point of contact for patients' concerns 
regarding pain and symptom management and to serve as generous providers um, for so psychosocial aspects of care to, as I mentioned, facilitate interdisciplinary family meetings and to support their nursing colleagues. So for this specific um, training, the criteria for the APRNs included at least five years of oncology experience. So we definitely wanted, though no, no one that's totally a novice to learning their oncology practice as an APRN, we wanted uh, those who have had years of experience with learning kind of what are the boots on the ground um, uh, ways to practice as an oncology APRN and then move on to um, enrolling or uh, taking part in our training. The nurses also had backgrounds in adult and pediatric um, care settings and um, also required a master's or DMP to be accepted um, into this training. And this training is fully covered by the grant. So once you get um, the, into the training, your all of your uh, meals and everything are covered by the grant. Um, the other thing about this, the APRNs have to commit to spending a time time with the palliative care team within their institution. So they need to find a palliative care team um, who's willing to host them, where they could shadow with the palliative care team somewhere near uh, 40 hours or, uh, or you know 12 months off and on. And so this was intended to foster collaboration with the APRN and the palliative care team. They also have to have an agreement to attend a monthly webinar that we do after the training for 12 months, once a month, virtually. And then one of the keys is outcomes, right? Because we want, we want to do this great palliative care training, but we need to look at outcomes. Is it effective? Are people learning? What are they learning? What is helping? What is not? So they need to be uh, to agree, the APRNs who apply to uh, participate in mandatory follow-up evaluations that are done at six and 12 months post-course. They also need, uh, finally, letters of support from their oncology program, and they need letters of support from the palliative care team that they're going to shadow. And so here are the domains that are addressed from the NCP guidelines, and uh, pretty much, as you'll see in the next slide, our methodology involves us developing the training course and centering it around these domains. So I try to get a good, clear snapshot of kind of what the training looks like, the course agenda. And so as you can see um, depicted in um, this table one is there's a, this three day training. The course um, is centered, as I said, around the NCP domains. Each session um, includes diverse teaching strategies because, you know, just sitting at a desk or having them sit around a circle you know, we need interaction. So we try to diversify the methods of teaching. So formal lecture, some informal discussion, some small groups. We do video clips and then analyze those. We uh, have done case studies. So we diversify the adult learning strategies to engage the learner. The, the third day is devoted to the skills um, to enhance the skills that were done on days one and two. So more interactive. Um, and then the small group work with skills that apply symptom management. Uh, we work through problem solving with symptoms, case studies. We actually do role play and communication where I might be the very tough family member that is asking all these tough questions and then have the APRN work with a team to answer them and we provide them that feedback. Uh, we also go over skills such as uh, providing support to grieving families and then conducting a spiritual assessment. And so our monthly webinars are held after this wonderful, you know, three days together uh, to go back and try to reinforce some of what we do um, during our sessions. And the content is really de designed not only to reinforce, but to also provide new content. So we do have some guest lectures that show up once a month uh, from all across the U.S. that are uh, very familiar with palliative care principles. And then this also, these monthly webinars allow for participants to facilitate networking. So to wrap it up, I'm going to talk about the results of this study. So far, within that five-year period, we have worked with um, and trained about 430 APRNs, which is great, uh, on over 46 states. And I believe I got the numbers recently. There, there's been nearly 40 of those APRNs that have been DMPs, which is wonderful. Um, and our courses include 25% uh, minority participants, um, and most of the participants are nurse practitioners, so somewhere near 85%. 
Um, and so we definitely need, that's why I'm here because I'm going to show a QR code at the end. So you can be part of this initiative where you can actually sit through a training course for free. We need to diversify the participants as well. So, um, and then a number of our um, APRNs do have quite a few years of experience, but not specifically to palliative care. So here are our other results that we're super excited about um, as you look. So if you look um, at the um, columns here that depict the actual training, these are uh, talk about the, um, the exact training modes that we use um, as we're going through the session. So we asked the course participants to rate the frequencies in which they participated in some common APRN palliative care practices after the course. So what did you take back home and how did it help you? And how many times did you implement it that you felt it was useful? So this included participating in family meetings. Were they more likely? The studies show that yes. Informing a patient um, that their cancer treatment wasn't working, which is super hard to do. That actually was one of our highest rated um, outcomes in terms of what the APRNs were, were able to do. Speaking to family members about bereavement services and then preparing uh, staff for the death of a patient. So our two highest areas where the APRNs showed a great improvement were um, uh, speaking to pa cancer patients about their treatment no longer being available and also um, having our oncologist um, refer for palliative care consults. So we do see an increase in outcomes. We plan on um, continuing this grant and this research. Again, our goal is really to diversify, get more DMPs involved and making sure that we are structuring this so that it is helpful uh, with our APRN learners. So in conclusion, um, this NCI supported training project addressed the important workforce issue of preparing oncology clinicians to integrate palliative care within their advanced practice roles. Um, evaluation data did demonstrate feasibility of such training and uh, the participation of the um, registrants really showed us that the outcomes were fruitful. The investigators recognized the many challenges of providing education. So at first we were kind of doing all live and then COVID hit and we did, you know, uh, more of it uh, virtually. So we really have kind of shaped it to fit the needs of those who, who want to get the training and education. But this training project can serve as a model for other clinical areas beyond oncology. For instance, I have talked about this topic before and I had, a, uh, I think it was an APRN in the burn unit that said, hey, we would love to have this type of training in the burn uh, unit. So uh, this is something else to be considered for the future. It did foster team collaboration and also touched upon the um, AAC and Essentials, which is something that all DNPs should seek to align with. Here are my references, and I will take some questions. And if you scan this barcode, it will give you more information about registration for this free NCI grant training. Again, if you're an APRN in oncology, this is the way to go. Get some information and boots on the ground training um, about palliative care. Thank you for this time. And uh, at this time, I will take some questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me your questions. Again, my email is here um, to stay on time today. They're going to um, they want the, e the questions to be emailed. I will happily answer your questions and provide inf any information that you need. Thank you.